Hi guys, uh, my crew here. This is my video on PVM tips and tricks for beginners that are not too hard to understand, but absolutely amazing in terms of increasing your quality of life, your DPS or whatever. So let's get right into it. The first tip that I want to give is actually a very, very big one. When you use Berserk, Sunshine or Death Swiftness, which are your biggest ultimates and your best ultimates, they increase your damage by a decent amount. Although your bleeds, your damage over time effects, do not get buffed by these ultimates. So for example, if you Zerk and then Dismember, your Dismember is not going to deal additional damage, same as Slaughter, etc. So in your Zerk, you obviously want to cast as many thresholds as you can, but you will have to cast some basics. And when you do have to use those basics, you want to use stuff like Decimate, Sever, etc., so they are actually boosted. Inside Death Swiftness and Sunshine, I think the only bleed that I sometimes use are Corruption Shot and Blast. But again, try and avoid using those until like your last basic and try and use as many thresholds in a Death Swiftness or Sunshine as you can. That also means that you want to use the things with the shortest cooldown first so you can use them twice in a Death Swiftness. For example, Death Swiftness and Sunshine last 30 seconds each or 35 if you have planted feet. So you'd be much better off using something like a snapshot at the start of your rotation as a 20 second cooldown so you can get a second snapshot out during that death swiftness versus something like a tendrils. This doesn't mean you don't want to use tendrils inside your death swiftness, but it has a 45 second cooldown. So tendrils literally cannot be cast twice in a death swiftness, so just look at the cooldowns of your abilities to see which one to prioritize. I would say do something like a snapshot into a rapid fire into a tendrils and then that will allow you to do another snapshot and another rapid fire inside that death swiftness instead of using a high cooldown ability like tendrils straight away and potentially missing out on that second snapshot hopefully that makes sense with those little tips there moving on to the next one next up is talking about cancelling abilities early fury and concentrated blast are basic abilities that are very strong if cancelled so by cancelling, I mean ending the ability before it's actually done everything it should. Both Fury and Concentrated Blast hit three times. The first two hits are in your global cooldown of your normal ability time, and then the third hit hits separately and essentially takes the same amount of time. So you want to cancel it after the first two hits. The way you do this is just instantly queuing or using another ability as soon as possible. For example, in this showcase, you can see that I use my Concentrated Blast, and if I let it go all the time, it's not going to deal that much damage. But if I let Concentrated Blast go, and then cancel it with a Dragon's Breath, I do a ton more damage, all in the same period of time. Not only do I deal more damage, I also get more Adrenaline, and that's going to increase your DPS heavily. Same applies with Normal Fury. Greater Fury, on the other hand, is one hit which does not need to be cancelled. So Greater Fury is kind of like a quality of life upgrade. This is why if you're using Revo++, for example with Slayer or something, avoid using Normal Fury and Concentrated Blast on your Revo Bars, as it's going to decrease your damage significantly. Try not to use them on your Revo Bars, only use them if you're going to cancel them. It's also cool to note that you get Sonic Wave as a two-hander ability instead of Concentrated Blast, so if you are a Revo user and you hate cancelling Concentrated Blast, sometimes using a two-hander, using a Staff, and using Sonic Wave it's just a nice quality of life bonus, especially when doing AFK activities. This should be fixed soon with ModPy's update, but things like Snipe and Rapid Fire have a huge delay after being used. For example, I'm going to show on screen right now Snipe being done with Revo and letting it auto cast. There is a big pause after throwing out the arrow and then using another ability. ModPy's update should fix this and it should fire another ability as soon as possible, but that update is not out yet. For now, what you want to do is as soon as you see that arrow leave, you want to use another ability instantly and you're going to increase your DPS uptime heavily. One of the big ones that's an exception I don't think is getting fixed with ModPy's update is Assault. So Assault can be cancelled two ticks early, and it will still deal the exactly the same amount of damage. Destroy and Assault both hit four times. Destroy hits four times over 4.2 seconds. So as soon as it hits its full hit, you use another ability. Whereas for Assault, 
it's over 5.4 seconds so if you cancel it two ticks early it's gonna be over 4.2 seconds just like destroy so yes i know me saying all of these numbers is kind of confusing but essentially the reason why i'm comparing these two abilities is you should channel them both for that 4.2 second duration and you shouldn't channel assault for 5.4 if you take a look on screen right here, I channel my assault. The first hit comes through, the second comes through, the third comes through. I use another ability in between the third hit and the full hit then comes through. So even though I cancelled it, that last hit had already registered and still went through because I channeled it for that 4.2 seconds. This is something that may take a little bit to get used to, the timings. But once you get that feel for that timing, cancelling it can increase your damage significantly. Because if you think about it, if you're channeling that ability every time you use it for an extra 1.2 seconds, that's extra damage that could be used during that time. Or extra adrenaline that could have been gained, etc. So it's really good to just do a simple thing like canceling your assault and increasing your DPS. These things are ways to increase your DPS without essentially even getting any upgrades. But you're going to do better on bosses. Okay, now the somewhat confusing things are out of the way, let's get into the more simple stuff that can increase your DPS very, very easily, and even passively. For example, something that's just a passive DPS increase is weapon poison plus 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 against anything that is poisonable. This also stacks with your Cinderbane gloves. So if you have Cinderbanes, they deal poison damage, right? But you're going to deal even more poison damage with weapon poison and Cinderbanes. So anything that is poisonable, pairing both of these increases your DPS significantly with no input. Another thing is not all PVM upgrades come from PVM. Some come passively from other areas. One giant example of this is Archaeology Relics. You can gain more DPS, more quality of life, and more survivability all from Relics. Invention is another one. You don't have to directly upgrade your gear, but if you upgrade the perks on your gear, your DPS output can be improved heavily. Something like Biting. Biting free is 6% more crit. That's a lot of extra chance of critting. A lot of extra DPS just in that one perk. Same applies with like Enhanced Devoted. That's a ton of food saving just from proccing your Devotion ability and making some of the hits you take your one damage. And obviously there's a lot more perks than those. They're just examples of passive things that can really increase your damage that aren't actually from PVM. There is plenty of other cool passive effects like player own farms or Ranch Out of Time. Meteor Strike buff from Ranch Out of Time, really, really, really good. The Araxor buff from Player Own Farms, where you deal 3% more damage to Araxor, that's also amazing. Quests can also improve your damage in certain areas or make you take less damage. Curse of the Blackstone is a big example, makes you take 10% less damage in Elite Dungeons. And things that come from quests, like Ava's Accumulator, that is a nice quality of life thing for range. And speaking about things that are cape slot exclusive, the comp cape rework actually made the cape slot really awesome. So a lot of the returning players don't actually know about the comp cape rework making most of the effects from capes that you have unlocked passive. This can be a huge passive increase to your damage. Max cape perks, if you are a maxed player, you can have free perks in your max cape. But even if you're wearing something like a kiln cape, those perks transfer over. So you can use perks that help you with PVM, such as the range perk, which has an increased chance to proc your criminal bolts. The defense perk, which gives you a sign of life. The strength perk, which increases your damage of your bleed from dismember. Really, really nice just having these passive perks just going all the time. But you don't have to be maxed to benefit from really cool cape perks. The Ava's Accumulator that I just mentioned is another one, right? It gives you that passive for range where your ammunition doesn't drop on the floor. That is on your Kiln Cape, etc. as well. And another one that not a lot of people actually have is a Spirit Cape. You should go spend 45,000 Dungeoneering Tokens on a Spirit Cape right now if you do not own one. Then just tuck it away in your Cape Rack in your player own house and you'll get its passive effect and it won't even take up bank space. It reduces the special move cost for summoning familiars by 20%. So it's optimal to use a Ripper Demon in most places. Your Ripper Demon with this cape just being owned is going to have its spec cost reduced by 20%. That then allows your Ripper Demon to produce more DPS and again a passive DPS increase. And of course, the biggest DPS increase from outside sources than gear and weapons is Herblore. 
We all know overloads are amazing and you should get them. They increase your damage, they increase your survivability. But it's not just overloads that you should make. You can make adrenaline potions that you can then combo into replenishment pots if you wanted to. If you're a higher level in Herblore, you can also make an adrenaline renewal potion which will give you adrenaline over time and it gives you more than a replenishment potion or an adrenaline potion. All of these forms of adrenaline potions are going to give you adrenaline in combat which is so helpful after you cast an ultimate ability. Just for example, look at this rotation on screen. I don't have an Adren pot and I Zerk. You have 20 seconds to do as much damage as possible, right? So I'm going to have to use a ton of basic abilities to build up to 50% adrenaline so then I can use my thresholds and go ham. Which is obviously going to cut into my DPS heavily and by the time I get one or two thresholds out, my Zerk is over. But if I do this exact same rotation right now, with an Adrenaline Renewal Potion which gives me 40% Adrenaline over 6 seconds, look how easy it is to get out my thresholds. Using hard hitting thresholds instead of basics trying to build up 2 thresholds inside a Zerg is so important. A lot of newer people to PVM underestimate just how good Adrenaline Potions are. And that will be it for this video. Hopefully this was useful to you. There is some basic information here that is going to increase your damage or some nice things that you might be able to do to passively increase your damage, like the Spirit Cape. Do give the video a like if you did enjoy it. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see a more advanced version of this. I may turn this into somewhat of a series. And for example, this can be like the beginner one, and then I'll go into more detail about other things that are a little bit more advanced in future videos. And then we can make it into kind of a series where each video gets a bit more complex, but then you learn more and more about PVM. If that's something you would enjoy, hit that like button and let me know down below so I'll make more in the future. And as always, until next time, see ya.